Okay, hi guys, my name is Jason Jetton, I'm the Operations Manager at Permeate Partners. And today, Gareth and I are going to be speaking to you about the Rotnest Hole and uh, Wastewater tr Treatment Facility Upgrade. So for those who don't know Rotnest, this is the uh, uh, aerial shot of the island. You've got your uh, ferry terminal here, which is just in front of the main settlement. And then coming around the corner here, you've got <coughs> Longreach Bay and Geordie Bay. Now, our wastewater plants are located sort of right in the middle of it there, which is a pretty uh, beautiful location for a wastewater treatment facility, but that's where the existing one was located in, and we looked at options to relocate it, but it just wasn't uh, feasible. <coughs> so just to give you a bit of a background, um, the existing wastewater treatment facility was a CAS system, um, two sequencing batch reactors. It had reached the end of its usable life, um, <coughs> required replacement of essentially ev everything apart from the uh, concrete bioreactor. The RAA had also identified that 50% of the potable water they were producing was going to the golf course. So given the fact that they have to desalinate all the water on the island, um, that was quite an extensive cost in power, um, carbon footprint. And really you go into all that effort to produce potable water for a non-potable end use, so it's, it's not a great outcome. Uh, the decision was made to upgrade the existing CAS to an MBR, and this would provide higher quality recycled water so they could use it for unrestricted irrigation on the golf course. It would also drastically reduce <coughs> the water consumption on the island and the energy consumption on the island. The objectives for this project uh, were to construct a higher quality facility. So being built, I think, was about 210 metres from the, where the water's breaking on the beach at some points. Uh, it's quite a corrosive environment, a lot of sand, ingress. Um, it's also a Class A nature reserve, so we need this thing to be reliable, robust. Uh, they also have one of the strictest discharge licenses in WA, so they run on a 10 and 1 license. Um, and that was great, but <laughs> not really, because we had to construct the plant whilst keeping it running. So we were knocking down, uh, we had to knock down sections of the old plant and build new parts, get that online, and make sure it was commissioned before we took other areas of the plant offline to make sure that we could keep it running um, and maintain our license. We also had to cater for the fact that uh, this is a Class A nature reserve, so um, there's quokkas everywhere as you guys would know, there's <coughs> heritage listed buildings, heritage listed trees. Um, uh, Gareth wanted to get one of the tanks in and, and the trees that were in the way we, we weren't allowed to cut down, so we actually had to downsize the tank so that we could get it to site without affecting any of the heritage stuff. Um, it's not like delivering something in Welshpool. Uh, it, it was very difficult. The other aspect of it was we had to integrate the existing storage tanks on the island to store the recycled water. So when we did the water balance um, during the winter months, obviously the, the golf course doesn't need any water. Um, and we didn't want to be discharging that water to the ground. But in the summer months, the demand for recycled water exceeded the sewage inflows. So luckily we had two tanks that were built by the army. Uh, tank 6 is about 9.2 megalitres concrete tank, uh, which you could just never build on an island out of concrete with concrete's $2,000 a cube or something over there, so it just wouldn't happen. But they were there, so we were able to utilise those tanks. Uh, we had to utilise those tanks to store it during winter so that in summer <coughs> we had enough water to supplement. Uh, the other aspect was low energy mode. So this, um, this plant has a GE leak membrane, so um, lower energy. One of the biggest power consumers in, or the biggest power consumer in wastewater treatment is, is uh, air. Um, and by reducing the aeration requirements, it would also reduce the power requirements. <coughs> so this is the uh, existing infrastructure. This is what we had to work with. So. We had, we've got a six mil inlet screen down here, which was, was new, and so we kept that. Um, the two SBRs, and there was a digester here. That was the old control room, and also the IMOF tank, and that was used to store the recycled water with the old plant. Um, and, and next to those was two infiltration basins. So we had to get rid of all this stuff, but we needed to keep this concrete structure because, as I mentioned, it was ridiculously expensive to get concrete on the island. and the project just wouldn't have stacked up if we had to build a new set of bioreactors. So the design, uh, convert the existing uh, SBRs into bioreactors. So we've got 
basically two bioreactors that run in parallel together, um, improving the treated effluent quality so that we could at uh, attain unrestricted irrigation, increasing the processing capacity. So we've got duty standby trains. Um, this plant's good for, its nameplate's 500, but it can do 750 biologically um, for a couple of days, and it can do 1.5 megalitres hydraulically. Uh, additional disinfection for the chlorination. So that was another thing we had to get for unrestricted irrigation. It's not just dosing the chlorine. We, we had to have a, a chlorine contact pipe so we get that resonance time. Uh, again, as I touched on making use of the reactors, all the supporting systems. So we put in a, a new flow balance tank, uh, dewatering facility, chemical dosing, electrical, basically gutted the whole place apart from the concrete bioreactors. Um, and then, yeah, minimising that discharge to environment w was key because, you know, we don't want to be putting water on the ground in winter when we don't have enough water in summer. So storing that water in those tanks was, was a big deal and that was one of the, the innovative um, aspects of this job. So in, uh, when the tank gets full, it will go into storage mode and it will send water up to the, the storage tanks. In summer, when it monitors the level of recycled water storage tank, when that starts getting low, it will bleed water back into the flow balance tank at a ratio um, calculated based on the sewage inflows from the previous days, because obviously you can't just flood the plant with water. Um, and it will just make sure that that tank has got sufficient water in it to, to irrigate the golf course. Challenges, so as you can imagine, building anything on an island, uh, on a beach on the island in a Class A nature reserve, um, made things very difficult. Uh, the split between the owner and the operator, so the RAA were the owner of the plant, PFM were operating the plant, and uh, then we had various contractors on site construction the plant, constructing the plant, keeping the plant operating through the upgrade, so um, this was a very difficult aspect, and, and Gareth will uh, talk more about it in the later slides, but um, you know, communication is key. We couldn't just go and take stuff offline. We had to talk with the operations team, make sure they were comfortable with it, set up temporary pipe work, pumps to transfer sludge across to different areas, um, make sure things were commissioned before we went to the next phase. Um, and, and yeah, this, the, the stage demolition and construction, that was really one of the key aspects of this job. I'll pass you over to Gareth now and he can talk about the new infrastructure. Thanks, Jason. And thank you everyone and welcome. Um, so the delivery of the project was really split into two main packages of work. There was the, um, the dewatering plant and then the MBR plant. Um, this was really because, because of the existing infrastructure as Jason mentioned just now, um, we actually had to demolish some of it and so we had to get the dewatering up and running first and then we could actually start on the, on the membrane plant. So as part of the project that we were awarded, uh, we were given a reference design um, that was based on the initial challenges and the initial design done by um, Jason and his colleagues. And so we took that and detailed that up and really you know, made it a, a working plant and did all of the detailed design on that and changed a few things. And yeah, a lot of things, particularly the building, bounced backwards and forwards a few times, particularly with the environmental constraints around the visibility of the building and the visibility of the plant and trying to reduce um, what can actually be seen from either from, from oh, sorry, either from this beach here, or the beach here, or the Bathurst Lighthouse, which is here. So we had to try and minimise the visual impact, and there was a lot of backwards and forwards around the building there. So when we did that, we actually then came upon this design here. It's, it's not incredibly clear, but what you can see, going back to the other picture, is that we have the, um, this is the old dewatering building here. This is the CAS plant. And this is the control room. And you can see that our, our new building here is laid over the top of the control plant and our chemical dosing is there directly over the top of the, um, the dewatering plant in the main control room. And so, we ha so there was a, this uh, fairly complicated uh, matter of staging the plant and actually, you know, so that we could actually build it and keep the plant running at the same time. Um, so I'll just quickly go through the, the process that we've used, or the process units. So down here we've got the inlet screen, so the sewage enters the works here. Uh, it then goes into the, the balance tank here, gets pumped through from the balance tank up into the fine screens. It goes into the um, biological reactor, the MBR here, um, goes through that proce process and then, then gets draw the treated water gets drawn out, goes through a buried chlorine contact pipe. 
which is actually underneath this tank here and in this sort of area here and then from there um, the chlorinated water goes into the storage tank and then it gets passed around the island. Um, I think the plant is a bit clearer if we move on to this one. So this is part way through construction and what we can see here is that we've got the the sludge dewatering building here, this is now up by this point in the project, this was up and running and treating the sewage, uh, sorry, treating the sludge. And we've got the, uh, the small sludge thick in the tank there. And we've also got the, the KES plant is, is operating here. Um, but what we've actually also done in the, in the interim is we've actually built these platforms. These are new, new platforms around the tank here, um, new fine screens. Um, we've actually knocked down half of this building has gone and it's been replaced um, um, by the, this dewatering plant here. And, but because we're having to keep the CAS running, we've actually got the, 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 um, the main plant MCC and the, the blowers operating here. And so we are actually had to re-divert some of the, uh, the pipe work around the building in order to actually keep the plant running. Um, so these are the main ones. This is obviously the, the new recycled storage tank and the, and the flow balance tank. Um, this is the, the odour control plant is up here and then our bioreactor here. So we've, this is about a month before we actually went live um, with this plant here. And so we're just finishing out the fit out of the, of the bioreactor there. Um, this is some months later now and this is the, pretty much the finished plant. Um, so you can see that the, um, the, the beige building that was here has now been demolished. So we've got both bioreactors here operating um, and we've got our chemical storage. So one of the things we had to do as well um, for the first stream of the bioreactor was actually have uh, temporary chemical dosing operating to keep the, to keep the new process running. Um, and now our control room is, is in here and all our con uh, the main equipment, all the main process blowers are, are in this building here. So that's really just a bit of an overview of the, the construction that we did. In terms of uh, innovations, really it's the, the integration of the plant into the island's overall water, water balance, as, as Jason said, and reducing the potable water demand. Um, and as, as Jason touched on, um, the water that's produced down here, depending on the inflow and the use of the golf course, it'll either go straight to, straight to irrigation here, or it will actually go up to the storage, the main storage tank, the nine megalitre storage tank up here. Um, at other times of the year, so during the summer, what will happen is the plant, the control system here will see that the level's going low in the recycled water storage tank here, and it will call for water to be returned here. All of that has been integrated into the system and operates automatically. So you're not having to get the operators to make decisions and look about, oh, you know, is, the, is, the, um, yeah, is this running a bit low or do we need a bit more water for the golf course? It's all been integrated into the control system to actually do that with minimal amount of, um, of input from the operators. Other innovations, uh, re as Jason said, is, is reusing the existing assets. So there was a lot of opportunity on the island with assets that you know, had been built for the surface water collection um, in past times that had been used on the island prior to desal. So these were assets that were sat there. And so incorporating all of those and looking for opportunities to use what was there already rather than immediately going, right, we have to build this, we have to build that. It's like, what do we have as an opportunity on the island to use? Um, the construction of the plant um, while maintaining the operation of the existing um, without introducing any new temporary plant or bringing on containerized units um, for a temporary purpose and also the, the construction of a complex plant in what is really a remote location without using modularized or containerized units. You know, we could quite easily, it might have been simpler in many respects to have brought in you know, five or ten containerized units as an MBR, brought them in, get them up and running with minimal work on the island um, however, in the opinion of the island and, and myself and Jason, that's not really a long-term asset. That's an asset that might last 10 or 15 years and then you're having to look at what you do next. Whereas this really has been built and designed as a very operable um, long-term asset for the island. In terms of environmental benefits, as Jason said, the 50% reduction in the potable water usage on the island coupled with the reduction in the energy consumption due to the, the reduced um, running times on the desal plant and the overall robustness of the system. This is a much higher treatment um, level that's provided here, and so they're much less likely to be any environmental incidents on the island 
as a result of, of the failure of the system. Um, moving on quickly, obviously in terms of social benefits, you know, we've by introducing <coughs> new, new infrastructure there at a higher level, we've actually you know, secured the ability of the island to keep taking large numbers of, um, large numbers of tourists and you know, maintain its kind of position um, that it does have in, in West Australia as a holiday destination. Um, we've reduced the footprint of the plant, um, so some of the plant, some of the area that was previously used, is now going to be um, repurposed and used for um, for more tourism uses. And obviously, you know, it's reduced the risk of um, environmental contamination of the beach by you, you know, treating it to such a high standard and, and chlorinating. Um, and the odours have also been tackled. 